The second week of camp in the books for your Saints. Hi everyone, welcome into the New Orleans Saints training camp show here on CST for Monday, August 31st. I'm Caroline Gonzalez alongside our senior reporter for NewOrleansSaints.com, John DeShazer. JD, we are 13 days away from the Saints season opener inside the Mercedes-Benz Superdome. I can barely contain my excitement, but how are things looking out there at the Oshner Sports Performance Center? Well, actually, outside right now, it's looking pretty terrible. It's raining. Inside, <laughs> inside, in my inside, I'm feeling great because tomorrow's an off day, and it's an off day for the players. So I'm really, really excited about Tuesday. <laughs> but the Saints were back at it at the Austin Sports Performance Center uh, at the indoor facility, full pads in this practice. And so they were ready to kind of get after it. I, I'm sure these guys are sick of seeing one another. I'm sure they are emotionally getting prepared for the season opener because, look, when you've been blocking the same guy every day and you've been, been defending against the same guy on, on the pass every day, when you've been rushing the quarterback every day and you're not allowed to hit him, uh, those kinds of things after a certain point in time begin to get monotonous and begin to really get on players' nerves. So I'm sure they're really looking forward to September 13th. We are just a few days away now. All right, well, things have been intensifying there at the Austrian Sports Performance Center for the Saints, and Sean Payton touched on that following practice today. I don't think about I wish we had more time, but you recognize the urgency and, and you recognize the, uh, the importance of the decisions coming up. Uh, I think one of the challenges always during training camp, and in this case, without preseason games, you know, you're in a race to prepare to get ready for that first game, and it's a little bit of a blind race because you don't know how the other teams uh, are doing or where they're at relative to their progress. Um, you, you really got to just focus on the things that you can control which is our progress and our conditioning and where we're at. So um, obviously it's an important week. Well, good news for Saints fans. Starting left guard Andrews Pete return to practice today after suffering a thumb injury. Now he still is dealing with it a little bit, but of course it's good to have him back in the lineup for the Saints and back at practice. Following practice today, Sean Payton spoke about how good it is to have Pete back in the lineup. Yeah, look, it's good to have him back. Um, you know, he had a thumb that he was dealing with, and uh, you know, like anything, when a player comes back, we'll be we'll be mindful of the reps they're getting those first few days. Uh, but he he obviously is a, an important part of what what we want to do with our offensive line, and uh, it's good to have him back out on the field. JD, on yesterday's show, we talked about special teams and obviously how important special teams are to any football team, but particularly for the New Orleans Saints, and they haven't shied away from making an impact on special teams. What are you seeing out there on the on the practice field out of the special teams unit? Well, I mean, uh, as we mentioned yesterday, it's a cohesive unit and it's full of really good players. Now, we've been in around this team in previous years where Special teams literally cost the Saints games, whether it be a blocked field goal or a blocked punt or a return for a touchdown. So they've been able to clean up those areas, and you can't give enough credit to special teams coordinator Darren Rizzi, who came in last year uh, and in his first year had a couple of all pros, TJ, uh, JT Gray as well as Deontay Harris and a pro bowler and kicker Will Lutz in his first season. The special teams had improved leading up to Rizzi getting here, but once the Saints hired him away from Miami, look, he came in with a reputation as being the best in the business, and the special team certainly has looked that way since he joined the team. Yeah, no, sh uh, no shortage of special teams talent there in the, in the Sean Payton era, that is for sure. Sean Payton spoke following practice today on the importance and the emphasis that he puts on special teams. I think over the years, you know, if you went back, we, we've had guys, uh, you know, Ramon Humber, Courtney Roby, we've had guys specifically that obviously played a position, but we're going to be four core teams players. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's an important part of the game. And when we have these discussions like we're going to have as the week leads up to this, this cut down, the, the challenge for every team this year is you're not getting some of the exposure you might have gotten in the preseason with some of these young players in the kicking game. So we have to do a good job of creating that uh, in our practices. But, but I do think that's kind of been a point of emphasis for us all along. Uh, I, I think it, it's important, and I think these guys understand they can make the roster. It's the quickest way to get onto the roster. All right, don't go anywhere. When we come back, we'll get into the offense for this Saints team. You're watching the New Orleans Saints training camp show here on CST. Don't go anywhere. 
Welcome back everyone to the New Orleans Saints training camp show on CST. I'm Caroline Gonzalez alongside our senior reporter for NewOrleansSaints.com, John DeShazer. JD, training camp darling last year was wide receiver Emmanuel Butler for the Saints. Unfortunately had the, that foot injury that kept him out for a few preseason games. But obviously we know the caliber of talent that the Saints brought in this year at the wide receiver position. What has Emmanuel Butler been doing this, this training camp? Well, for the most part, he's been flying under the radar. Um, when you see Michael Thomas out on the field and you see Emmanuel Sanders, uh, we've seen Traquan Smith make a bunch of big plays. Uh, we've seen a lot of guys make specific plays. So he's been able to fly up under the radar a little bit, a lot more than last year, because last year, as you mentioned, tr not just training camp darling, he was a superstar in training camp, a guy who really uh, got confidence from Drew Brees. Drew Brees didn't mind throwing him the, the, a pass when he was in traffic, when he was covered. He trusted Emmanuel Butler to come down with it. And so, you know, he earned that trust from Brees, but he really has kind of had to work himself back up a little bit from the bottom because of the addition of Emmanuel Sanders and the emergence of Traquan Smith. So, you know, he's, he's the guy who's in a fight for, for a roster spot. Yeah, fighting for that roster spot indeed. We know that Emmanuel Butler came into the Saints as an undrafted free agent out of Northern Arizona last year trying to make a name for himself. But we know the progression that comes from year one to year two. And Emmanuel Butler spoke on that following practice today. I felt like it was a blessing, honestly. It was a great opportunity. You know, um, I got to learn from, from a receiver like Mike Thomas, you know, the best in the league. Um, I was able to be around Drew Brees the entire season. I got to be around my coaches who are, in my opinion, you know, this is the only team that I've been around, but from from what I've heard, are two of the best coaches in the league at, at the wide receiver position. So um, I felt like, you know, it, it's ultimately not where I wanted to be. But um, as I said last year, you know, I feel, I'm a believer in everything that happens for and everything happens for a reason. Um, I feel like God places you in positions so that you can grow. And I feel like last year that was just um, another opportunity for me to be able to really uh, learn more and grow as a, a man and a football player. Josh Hill, another undrafted free agent who has made good on this team, is going into his eighth year as a member of the New Orleans Saints. J.D., what have you seen out of Josh Hill so far in training camp? Well, he's one of those guys who kind of flies under the radar. You don't necessarily know Josh Hill uh, or how valuable he is until he's not there to provide that value. Uh, we've seen some games for the Saints where Josh Hill was injured, and it changed the entire offensive complex for them because there were certain plays – they simply could not execute, couldn't run because Josh Hill wasn't on the field. So he adds that kind of value. Well, Josh Hill coming off of his best year as a member of the New Orleans Saints last year, and he knows he can play various roles for this team. He spoke on that following practice today. You know, I think, I think I'm a guy that can just do a lot of different things, move me around in different situations in the offense, and um, a guy that contribute at a high level on special teams as well. Um, you know, kind of how I made my way in, but pride myself in just being able to do anything, um, whether that's be in the backfield or on the line of scrimmage. Um, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm well-rounded enough to do those things. All right, we'll get into the nuts and bolts of Saints training camp today. Don't go anywhere. You're watching the New Orleans Saints training camp show here on CST. Welcome back into the New Orleans Saints training camp show here on CST. I'm Caroline Gonzalez alongside my trusty co-host and John DeShazer. JD, a player that we haven't really heard a lot about this, uh, this offseason has been Malcolm Brown, but he brought a lot to the Saints defensive line last year. Well, you can kind of lose him in the shuffle if you're talking about a defensive line that includes Cam Jordan, that includes David Onyemata, that includes Sheldon Rankins. So sometimes you'll forget some of those guys and they can get lost in the shuffle a little bit and you can forget exactly how valuable they've been to the Saints. Well, Malcolm's, Malcolm Brown, excuse me, spoke on the depth of this defensive line following practice today. It's deep, you know what I mean? Uh, we, got, we got talent on every level. Uh, one guy goes out, another guy comes in, you know, the, the, the talent level can't drop off. So, uh, you know, everybody's just in their flip books right now trying to get better. Uh, not worry about ones and twos and threes and this and that and numbers and stuff. We just all trying to get the playbook down, uh, work hard, you know, go out there, compete every day, uh, get better every day, you know, trying to, trying to get to that one goal that everybody has in mind. Well, we heard Andres Pete return to the Saints practice today following a thumb injury. He's still battling it a little bit, but good to have him back on the field. JD, for the Saints, who was on the field, who was off the field? 
well, I think a pretty significant returnee was running back Ty Montgomery, and here's why. Uh, running back Dwayne Washington is on the reserve COVID list. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that he has COVID-19, but he is on that reserve COVID-19 list right now. So Ty Montgomery coming back gave the Saints at least a decent complement of running backs. And why is that? Because Alvin Kamara missed another practice. So Alvin Kamara was out. He did not participate as well as Malcolm Jenkins, uh, Marcus Davenport. We hadn't seen linebacker, the rookie linebacker Zach Bond in a little while now. Uh, and Cesar Ruiz, again, was not on the practice field. So he's losing those reps at center. We've seen Eric McCoy there, obviously, with Ruiz out. And today, Will Clapp worked at left guard because Andrews Pete really didn't work there during team drills. And we saw Nick Easton move from left guard to right guard because McCoy, who generally plays right guard, was at center right now. So a little bit of a shuffle along the offensive line until you can get all the bodies healthy and a little bit of a shuffle at running back until you can get all the bodies healthy. Yeah, that was a mouthful, J.D. That was a lot to keep up with. Uh, but we'll keep an eye on those players. The team will have the day off tomorrow on Tuesday, and then they will return to practice on Wednesday. Now, remember, the team will get cut down to the 53-man roster on Saturday, so we'll, we'll continue to keep you up to date with everything that we know following practice as the week goes on. Again, the team will have the day off tomorrow. We will be back on Wednesday. For Caroline Gonzalez, John DeShazer, have a good night, everybody.